Mr. Speaker, I rise to second the report on the Select Committee on County, Publics and Investment Committee. The Auditor General for the financial statement for the following counties, water service providers for the financial year 2018, 2019 and 2020-2021. These counties that have already been listed by the mover of this motion, I will restrict myself to the observations that we made during the inquiry into this, um, the way this county manage their water resources. Mr. Speaker, one of the biggest problem is that a lot of these counties, the companies, the water companies were being run by the board without the input of the county governors. In fact, in most cases, the county governors appeared before our committee and they raised concern as to why they were taking off and responding to issues which they really did not understand. These water companies were being run autonomously by the board and it brought in a lot of conflict on how they can be able to manage the resources. Yes, the CCM in charge of water and sanitation for each of the counties were represented in those boards and they worked tirelessly to be able to set up uh, budgets that can be able to allow them run these water companies. But the problem has already been explained by my colleague had to do with an issue where you find in Bungoma and Transoya counties there's one water company. You go to Kisi and Yamira, there's one water company. So it brings in the issues of autonomy on which county can be able to generate more resources. So when we looked at that, our committee highly recommended that each of the 47 county governments have their own water companies. We also had a big issue looking at the issues of regional water bodies. The constitution is quite clear in terms of water and sanitation. Water and sanitation are devolved to the county governments. However, if you look at the third schedule of the constitution, the national government also has a role to play when it comes to the issue of protecting um, water sources, securing sufficient re residual water, hydraulic uh, engineering, and safety of dams. When we sit in this house, Mr. Speaker, we also confuse the whole process because I remember there was during the time when we were interrogating these counties on how they are managing their water resources, there was a water act which was being amended. And if you notice, the proponent of that water act were moving away all the functions of managing even local companies to the national government. So that brought in a huge conflict. And I think it's about time that all of us now look at how we can be able to really fight for devolution. One of the key recommendations of our committee was that each of the 47 counties have, have got to look at their resources so that we can avoid this land revenue water. They look at what they need from these regional bodies, but ultimately work towards managing their own resources. My colleague has already elaborated clearly on the losses that each of these companies were getting. There was a lot of unaccounted for water and this unaccounted for water came in as a result of dilapidated infrastructure because there are so many leakages, so many leakages. So it, when you come to a situation where two counties share one company and then water is bought from another company or, or from another county, by the time the water gets there, if you calculate how much was sold to those companies versus how much they generate after they sell the company, the water, you realize that there are so much losses, which also led to a lot of financial mismanagement. When we are looking at the case of Nairobi, Mr. Speaker, it was very difficult to be able to tell how much was that company earning. In fact, some of these companies ended up just being you know, sort of like um, corruptions dens where people who work in these companies end up just setting their side water companies, buying water bowsers so that they can be able to sell because the mismanagement in the companies that were running water services was so high such that it was impossible to be able to ensure 
sufficient water supply. And this is a function of the national government. The government, national government has got to ensure that there is a sufficient sustainability of water supply to all the counties. So, Mr. Speaker, this was the first time that this Senate was looking at these water bodies. There is still a lot of work that ought to be done, quite a lot of work. And one of our recommendations was that, and I don't know whether that recommendation found itself in the report, is that each of the 47 county senators must now be able to interact on a very close watch with the water companies to ensure that these water companies, first of all, understand their budgets. Secondly, that the county governments allocate budgets to them. But these water companies must also be run to be able to produce uh, enough water, uh, water um, you know, which is sustainable to be able to provide for all the citizens of that of these sub counties, and on top of that, we also have to deal with the issue of sanitation. You'll find that some companies only deal with the supply of water, but when it comes to the issue of sewage and sanitation, it is left for programs to be funded by the World Bank. We have to be very clear that these are our responsibilities. Today, Mr. Speaker, you will understand that there is a lot of shift on the role that the World Bank and the IMF plays in countries. Burkina Faso, as a country, the, the ruler of that country has said no to the support of IMF. IMF continued to rate our countries. In fact, today, a friend of mine sent me a small note and said, this is what is important to us. Where the IMF has already downgraded Kenya and has portrayed a very dark future for, for Kenya just because we want to be able to control ourselves. So this trickles down. So our water companies must now be the responsibilities of the county governors because the county governor is the CEO of that county. And if the CEO does not know how the waters are being run in, that, in those counties, it becomes very problematic. We now have a ministry on the blue economy. I think it is important that those water companies and that Ministry of Blue Economy work together to be able to set up huge dams, to be able to ensure that we have reservoirs. We have a big problem when it comes to Nairobi as an example. The water from Nairobi comes from, I believe, Moranga, or maybe the next county, and it passes through, and there are counties that do not have water, so the water comes here. So we need to now start asking ourselves, how do we ensure that there is sufficient water that can be able to sustain the residents of Nairobi by investing in big water reservoirs. This is a responsibility of the national government. If the national government can just take the third schedule, or the, is it the fourth schedule, and look at what their role is, and they put resources there, then we can be able to make a lot of uh, difference. Mr. Speaker, let me reiterate again on the importance of each of the 47 counties establishing their own water companies and they run them as a resource they realign their own existing resources we have a lot a lot of water is washed away some of us who are farmers we tap this water if you go along most of the river banks you will see people using the water which eventually will drain into the lake and using it for irrigation. We can as well encourage county governments to be able to put, to establish water reservoirs where they can be able to tap into this water. So this is, this is a resource that we can be able to, once we realign just our small existing resources, we can be able to ensure that it is supports our population. Mr. Speaker, let me reiterate again on the importance of legislations. When we draft legislations or legislations are proposed in this house we have to be cognizant of the fact that our constitution have devolved certain functions water and sanitation fully devolved these water bodies original water bodies should actually be working with the national government to be able to develop policies but not to now start running the distribution of water in the county governments we're, during the time when we were interrogating these water companies, we also spent a lot of, of our time talking to the regional bodies. 
There was a huge conflict between Kajiado County, Makweni County, coming all the way to at the river when it comes to the issue of Lolduresh, which is a water source. That water, historically, was piped from Lolduresh, which is down Kajiado South, to come and water flower farms in Kitengala. So the residents of that area, Makweni County, were not getting any water. The residents of Kajiado were not getting any water. So it's important that we look at our own resources. And first of all, before we send that water to serve other people, we make sure that we serve ourselves first. Mr. Speaker, if you and I travel today, the first thing we are told on an airplane is that you need to buckle up first. And even if you have a child, protect yourself first before you do what? You protect that child. So I think we need to be able to take this logic in terms of when it comes to the issue of running our own resources. There is no reason as to why Kajiado County should actually, residents of Kajiado County should stay without water because that water is going in to support people of uh, the river. There is absolutely no reason as to why the people of Makweni should not be able to benefit from the Mzima Springs because all that water is going downstream to be able to support Mombasa County. I think we can be able to share these resources. We don't give out all the resources. In fact, even in the Bible, the Bible says that the poor man is the one who gives out all his wealth and is left begging. I'm not a preacher, but I remember that. And it applies clearly on how we run our resources. So, Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I want to conclude by stating the following. One, each one of us here must now start taking our job very seriously when it comes to the issue of managing our resources. If you take some time and you read the Auditor General report, you'll be shocked. There's a lot of mismanagement of the little resources that we have in the country. A lot of mismanagement. Whatever happens at the county headquarters also happens in those small companies that are open to run our resources. We must also now bite the bullet, Mr. Speaker. Each of our 47 county delegations here must engage county governors to be able to re-examine and carry out an audit of our water infrastructure. Because there's no point of us buying a lot of water from nearby uh, counties and then all that water is lost because of leakages, you know, dilapidated uh, uh, infrastructure, which some of them actually end up have been carcinogenic. So it's important that we'd rather do, even if we are to get any grants from the national government, those grants are utilized properly. You know, there's so much that people can eat. But really, if you want to jeopardize even the supply of your water because you want to get a tender and line your own pocket, we, we just need to rethink how we want to live our life. These boards, Mr. Speaker, must now also, we must change the law to ensure that the people who serve on these boards have got experience on managing water companies. There's no point of rewarding our friends. We need to now start introducing the concept of meritocracy. Have people who understand the importance of this resource. If it's taken care of, how well it's going to be able to support this current generation and future generation. So the boards we must make sure that we use a competitive process, appoint people who have got a background in water and sanitation so that they can be able to make infrastructure that will be able to outlive them. Financial management, Mr. Speaker, it is imperative that the CCM in charge of finance of each of the 47 counties, CCM in charge of water, who is now, and the CEO is in charge of water, who is the accounting officer, their role must be very clear when it comes to managing these semi-autonomous companies. It is not the board which will have all the responsibilities. I think the CEO of finance should be tasked with the responsibility of ensuring that they go through the accounts of each of these counties, water bodies, so that when those counties appear before an oversight body, even the governors will be able to be in the know. Most governors have got no clue on what is happening. 
in conclusion, I hope that um, when it comes to passing this legislation, we can all be very selfish and protect devolution. Let the national government handle policy work, but when it comes to the issue of implementation, all of us.